Tomas Villanviegas in Madrid. He's an associate professor at the Francisco de Vitoria University School of Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. My I know pleasure. that you are currently working as an emergency physician, seeing some 350 coronavirus patients per day. Yeah. How does yeah. this compare to a normal day as an emergency physician? Well, actually, it's like day and night. There's nothing to do with, uh, with the situation, with the scenario we had uh, almost three weeks ago. And we moved from a normal BC city center um, emergency department with typical diseases uh, uh, as normal, as strokes, uh, myocardial infarctions, and so on, uh, to uh, the weirdest scenario I've, I've ever worked with. Uh, we are receiving at least 300, 350 patients per day. All of them are suspecting, suspicious to have a uh, coronavirus infection. And this has been a challenge. We moved from a uh, normal ED and uh, the challenge is to change spaces, uh, patient circuits, um, human resources. This has been a huge effort made by, by my hospital. Mm -hmm. What's the most difficult thing that you're dealing with right now in treating all these patients? Well, under a 100% medical point of view, um, respiratory syndromes are always easy to handle. But um, I heard one of my uh, colleagues in, in Italy in a recent interview that the, they call the coronavirus disease as a crazy disease. And he's totally uh, right. I cannot agree more with him. Um, physical examination, for example, is not so reliable. We can't rely in our uh, daily uh, tools like the stethoscope. So we need to take the decision whether the patient needs to be admitted or can safely discharge home uh, based on the lung invo involvement. And for the lung involvement, we used to deal with people that like look totally normal, but uh, we need to take a, take a look carefully of their lungs. Uh, probably uh, based on uh, the chest X-ray, which is a uh, normal radiograph uh, of the lungs, or uh, at least in my case, I rather uh, rely on the ultrasound because it has been shown to be more sensitive and more specific. But anyway, so the key point and the um, uh, and the challenge of this of the disease is to know whether the patient has lung involvement or not. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there are lockdowns around the world, including there uh, in Madrid, to tell people to stay home, yeah. wear masks when, when they go outside, if they, if they have to go outside. You're right there treating patients who have coronavirus. But what precautions are you taking to make sure that you yourself don't become infected? And is that a big concern for you, as we know a number of healthcare workers around the world have themselves been infected? Well, apparently we got the huge, uh, the bigger number of the world of healthcare uh, workers infected. So um, there's something that we are probably doing not uh, correctly, uh, we can say. Uh, in my daily work, um, of course, I try to be as much protective as, as I can uh, with all the material the, the hospital are giving to us. And it's kind of, uh, and it varies in, in day by day. In some cases we have a uh, fancy PPEs uh, totally complete, and the day after we got just uh, reusable uh, jackets. That's the way it is. I mean, we are in a kind of a war zone in my hospital, so we have to deal with uh, all the material we have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to leave it there. All the best to you and all the other healthcare workers who are working so, so hard these days. Tomas Villan Villegas in Madrid, thank you so much for your time.